Hello, welcome to 2.4 Angle Properties in Polygon. Polygon, the word polygon, poly means many, gone means sided. We're looking at polygons. Okay, so first of all, a quick little detour convex versus non convex. Convex means each interior angle measures less than 180, so each of these angles is less than 180. Non-convex or concave means that you have an angle that's bigger than 180. So we're looking at convex here. So it says prove that the sum of the measures of the interior angles of any convex polygon is 180n minus 2. And we're going to look at what Victor did here. So Victor took a polygon. And remember to prove something, it has to be in the general sense. So he said, oh, here is a general n-sided. So I said, um, he started with point 0.1, and he goes from point 0.1, or he starts here, rather, and he goes to point 0.1, and he says, well, that's one triangle. Then he goes to point 0.2, that's two, three triangles, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight triangles right here, and then I said, well, it went up to n. In this case, his n was 9, but we're saying in general it could go up to n, okay? So we said, well, if I added up each of those triangles, I learned a couple sections ago that each of those triangles has an interior angle of 180. So if I added up all of those angles, I would get n, that's my number of sides, or my number of triangles, of 180, n times 180. But I only want the interior angles of my polygon. I only want some of these guys here. So I need to subtract all these angles in the triangle. Well, look, all those angles equal 360. So the sum of all my angles in an n-gon, in a shape with n sides, equals 180 times n minus those 360 that I don't want to count. Then he factored, he took out 180, well 180 n taking out 180 leaves you with n, 360, negative 360, um, if you factor out 180 you're left with negative 2. So he found that the sum of the measures of the interior angles can be expressed as 180 n minus 2. So this is a result we are going to use. Okay, we want, no, we don't actually want to do that. We're going to skip that guy. Okay, um, outdoor furniture and structures like gazebos sometimes use a regular hexagon in their building plan. Determine the measure of each interior angle of a regular hexagon. We're going to do this one without the end, looking at the answer. So, a regular hexagon. The word regular means that every single side is the same. A hexagon, does anyone know how many sides? Hex is like, hex is kind of evil. It goes the number six. That's how I always remember this one. So, and these actually are regular. So it means every side is exactly the same. So it also means that every angle is exactly the same. Okay? So, in order to find the interior angles, the total interior angles, we learned that S of n is equal to 180 n minus 2. So in this case, S of 6 is equal to 180. 6 minus 2 is 4. S of 6, getting out your calculator, that would be 400 plus 320. 720. So 720 is the total amount of degrees inside here. But what I want to know is I want to know how much one single angle is. So there's six angles in total, so I need to divide by six to get just one. So one angle. Well, what's 72 divided by six? Sorry, 720 divided by 6 
is 120. So one angle has 120 degrees. Again, it's important that we realize that this is regular. If it was not a regular, not every side was the same, we wouldn't have been able to find that conclusion. Okay, let's do this one together. Determine the measure of each side of each interior angle of a regular 15 side polygon, a pentadecagon. So we're going to go S of 15 is equal to 180, 15 minus 2, 180 times 13, getting out your calculator, is equal to 180 times 13, hopefully you're doing this with me, 2,340. Now how do I find what one angle has? Well, how many angles are there total? I divide this by 15 to get my final answer. It's 23. Four zero divided by fifteen of one hundred and fifty six degrees per angle. Let's see if we got the right answer that they did. One hundred and fifty six degrees, looking good. Okay, now we're going to do something called tessellations. So we have this floor tiler um, designs custom floors using tiles in the shapes of regular polygons. Can he can can he use congruent regular octagons and squares to tile a floor if they have the same side length? So we have something with eight sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I'm awful. And squares, regular, so all the same sides. What I'm wondering is can those nicely fit together? That's what they're asking. Does that exist? So. Um, this is how Vanessa attacked this problem. She said an octagon has eight sides, so there's a total number, the total interior angle of 100, sorry, 1,080. And she divided by eight, so each one, each octagon has an angle right here of 135 degrees. The measure of the interior angle is 135. The measure of each internal angle of a square is 90. So is there some way that I can fit together 90 and 135 with no gaps? Well, in order for there to be no gaps, we need to somehow add up those angles to get 360. And that's how she's attacking this. She say, she's saying, I can fit two octagons together, um, forming an angle that measures 270. So right here, 270. Well, she saw that there's if 360 minus that 270, there was the gap of 90 degrees. And that's exactly the size of that regular square, of a, a single angle in that regular square. So she said a square can fit in this gap if the sides are the same length as that of the octagon. There's quite a few questions, a couple of questions on your assignment just like this. Um, so can we create a a pattern using regular hexagons and equilateral triangles. Okay, we found back here that each hexagon has an angle of 120. Again, regular, all the same sides. So we have 120, okay, and then we have an equilateral triangle. Well, an equilateral triangle has three angles that are the same, and those three angles have to add up to be 180. So in other words, 180 divided by 3. Oh, actually, this was a question on last section's uh, questions. 180 divided by 3 is 60 degrees. So is there a way we can range 120 and 60 to create 360? Let's try a couple ways. What's 120 plus 120? 240. Ooh, 240 plus another 120. Does that give us 360? That gives us 360. But then that's just only using hexagons. Let's let's try this 240 
And then could we add another 60 to that to get 300, and another 60 to that to get 360? So what I did is I took a hexagon, a hexagon, and two triangles can add together. Let's see what they did here. Each angle in a hexagon is 120, and each angle in equilateral is 60. The two shapes are put together along a side. The angle formed is 180. Therefore, if two hexagons and two triangles are put together, the angle common vertices is 360. Therefore, they can be tiled. Good. Very good. And here is what that tiling pattern looks like. So we do have those two triangles. Oh, I can't write in here. Two triangles and, um, and two hexagons coming together. Okay, key ideas is you can prove properties of angles and polygons using other angle properties that have already been proven. So we use the fact that a triangle has a sum of 180 degrees uh, to prove pro these properties that we found. And the two properties that we saw is the sum of the measure of the interior angles of a convex polygon. Is this 180 n minus 2? And if we are given a regular polygon, and remember that regular means every side is the same, then we can take 180 n minus 2, or we can take the total interior angle divided by each ang the number of angles to get one single angle, how much that measurement is. Um, and the sum of the measures of the exterior angles of a polygon is 360, is another property you might need to be able to use. There's an example of that in the book. We didn't go over that one. Okay, your assignment is 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 10, 16. And you also have a history connection um, on, about Buckminster Fullerene on page 103.